monsters. And I kept saying for years, why aren't they getting them? For years, I said it. I got them. The press doesn't talk about it. They what don't did talk you about it because they don't want to talk about it. You talk did, about it. I do a little bit. What, Look what, at al Baghdadi. He was the founder of ISIS. We took him out. Nobody could find him for 15 years. Far bigger than Osama bin Laden. Far bigger. Osama bin Laden bad, and he hit you know the World Trade Center, and it was a horrible thing. But al Baghdadi was. Okay, so just to be clear, that was two different videos uh, on Hugh Hewitt. Trump talked about how the terrorists he got were so much worse than this like mediocre bin Laden guy who only had one hit. We'll return to that. And then he was on Fox News talking about it yet again. He cannot stop talking about it in advance of 9-11 that nobody cares about bin Laden. Um, these other guys are monsters, presumably bin Laden, not a monster. And so total garbage, as we always say, can you imagine if Ilhan Omar said that bin Laden only had one hit, so who cares? He, it, they're not, we're not talking about like a musical act, we're not talking about Friday. Like the one hit was the Twin Towers. And first of all, it's not even true. He was in charge of multiple terror attacks in multiple different countries. So he doesn't even know what he's talking about historically. But Brett, that is just such a devastatingly pointless thing to bring up and have Hugh Hewitt, who was so squirmingly awkward as he was listening to that. That is what he's saying as people are responding to this attack against uh, Afghans and, and the US uh, military. It seems like uh, bag, uh, that uh, Hugh Hewitt was asking, like, well, who did you get? How did you get? ISIS, like if ISIS X is the group that carried out this attack, like where's your argument? Like mm -hmm. also just to call it a hit, Ugh. it launched the war on terror. Like what? None of it makes sense. I don't, and and that's his thing. As I've said for years in the show, like he just kind of says stuff that sounds like what people who don't really know what they're talking about would complain about, specifically the way they'd complain about it if the destination is not to actually find the answer or figure out a solution, but rather just to feel right while complaining and getting mm -hmm. someone else to go, mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah, but in that case, Hugh Hewitt just wanted to move on. Like he, he like he tried to talk a couple times because it's so cringeworthy. The only thing Trump cares is people believing that he's cooler because he got someone worse. That's, and Trump like either knows that it doesn't matter or can't tell how much of his raw core psychology he's revealing that he's flashing to all of us. You can hear what he said there and know everything about who he is as a person. And again, he either doesn't know that he's doing that or doesn't care because he's never really been punished for being so fundamentally pathetic. Anyway, uh, those are our garbage people, but who did you choose? Well, 36,000 of you voted this week in our poll on the community tab of the YouTube, uh, for the Damage Report channel. Uh, and so here are the top five. Coming in at number five with 3% of the vote, Larry Elder for his long history of misogynistic comments. He recently said he can't be a misogynist because his mother was a female. Don't understand that point. Anyway, number four with 6% of the vote, Josh Gottheimer for attempting to hijack the infrastructure bill. That's the conservative Democrat there who is now part of the sabotage squad. Uh, number three with 19% of the vote, Kaylee McEnany for claiming Trump never had crisis after crisis after crisis. We reminded you of a few actually on the show today. Uh, number two with 28% of the vote, Ron DeSantis for saying Biden should follow his lead on COVID, which would be a lead right off a cliff into a pool of lava. And number one, your garbage person of the week with 45% of the vote, Dan Patrick for blaming black people for the COVID spike. And then after being criticized for that, doubling down on it. That was fun, true pieces of garbage. Thank you to everybody who voted. Larry Elder, by the way, had to, he literally in a debate, he said, listen, we gotta move on from this election meddling stuff. And people were like, boo, boo, the election's done, boo. He literally says, I gotta call a mulligan here and re-answer that question. He said that during <laughs> a debate. He said, I gotta call a mulligan? He literally said, I gotta call a mulligan oh, here. Oh, jeez. No, that's not gonna work. But um. I want you to show some respect because that could be our next governor, by the way. <laughs> anyway, that's fun. Um, Brett, as always, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you on.
It's great to be here. Thanks. And then uh, this Friday, going. this Sunday, I'll be on Francesca's show, The Bituation Room. Ooh, exciting. After and everyone, uh, definitely check out The Common Room with Brett coming up uh, later on today. Uh, that said, uh, thank you for joining us both today and throughout the week. We got a lot more content coming up. Uh, Galaxy Brain, The Main Show, Common Room, and in just a few minutes, Indisputable. You're not going to want to miss it. I had a great time on the program with Dr. Rashad Ritchie yesterday. Those clips are now available at youtube.com slash indisputable TYT if you'd like to watch. But until next time, stay safe out there, stay sane out there. And I'll see you soon. It's Friday, good to be with you. Welcome to Indisputable, we got a lot on the agenda today. Ladies and gentlemen, breaking down news of the day, none other than attorney at law, Dina Dahl. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. She is a law and crime analyst. Also, bullpen segment, debate. We will have Charles Love on the show, executive director, seeking educational excellence host of the Charles Love Show. We're going to talk about critical race theory, and fostering what he calls patriotic education should be fun. Top story, ladies and gentlemen, as you are well aware, the Capitol Police officer who shot and killed Ashley Babbitt describes what really went down. He said, and I quote at one point, they talked about cutting off my head. On Thursday, as part of a new interview revealing himself to the public, Capitol Police Officer, he's a lieutenant by the way, Michael Byrd, who was responsible for the shooting of a shooting insurrectionist, Ashley Babbitt, opened up about the hate and threats he received from far right activists who guessed his identity. Now his identity, ladies and gentlemen, has actually been floating around on social media for a while. 
And this was exposed by other far right extremists. This is now confirmed that he is the guy. Ashley Babbitt, who was shot while trying to crawl through a broken window at the Capitol after ignoring police demands to stop her approach has become a martyr of right wing extremists. Her cause has even trickled into mainstream GOP politics. Paul Gosser, Republican out of Arizona wearing an armband with her name and President Donald Trump saying that she was in fact murdered. Uh, let me go to the video of this lieutenant who is in danger, make no mistake about it. He is in danger, his life is in danger. Here's what he said. Your name has been battered about on the internet, but you've never been officially publicly identified. Do you want to tell us who you are? Uh, my name is Michael Byrd. I'm a lieutenant for the United States Capitol Police. For months, he has lived in hiding, he says, over this moment. His decision to use deadly force against a rioter as she climbed through a barricaded door that leads to the House chamber. In the months since, he's been the target of threats. Can you give us the nature of some of those threats? They talked about, you know, killing me, uh, cutting off my head. Um, you know, very vicious and cruel things. Racist things? There were some racist attacks as well. That's all disheartening because I know I was doing my job. Given the nature of the threats that you describe, do you have any concern about showing your face and identifying yourself? Of course I do. Uh, that is a very vital point and it's something that uh, it's frightening. I believe I showed the uh, utmost courage on January 6th, and it's time for me to do that now. Responsible that day for securing the House chambers, Bird couldn't see what Americans were witnessing on their TVs. Now, I want to remind you, during this time, they literally took furniture in order to barricade themselves inside of this building, which means they were also trapped inside of that room. Okay, he heard what was happening on his police device. And there also came over the speaker, the device he had that shots were fired. Well, shots were not fired. It was said, but it did not happen. It was a mistake. He heard all of the screaming. He heard the Capitol Police retreating. And he was trying to protect between 60 to 80 individuals that included members of Congress and staff, here's more of the video. Were you afraid that day? I was very afraid. What are you hearing on your radio? I'm hearing about the breaches of different uh, barricaded areas, uh, officers being overrun, officers being down. Did you ever hear a call or a report of shots fired during any of this? As a matter of fact, I did. There was reports of shots fired through the house main door onto the floor of the chamber. Later, those reports would prove to be false. This video captures Byrd instructing members of Congress to don gas masks. We had a disbursement of tear gas in the rotunda. Please stand by your masks under your seats. Now I want to remind you, it is unfortunate that Ms. Babbitt is dead. Uh, but Ms. Babbitt was in fact breaking the law. She was an insurrectionist and she committed, in my opinion, an act of domestic terrorism. The truth is if this would have been Black Lives Matter, if this would have been um, a group with the last name Muhammad, religious ties to Islam, they would have all been dead. Would have been dead bodies all across that lawn and inside of that building. They were given. These, the benefit of the doubt in a significant way. And they were given protection that they should not have received, but they did. Here's more. Former President Trump has, has talked about you and this, and this incident. He says she was murdered. What does it feel like to hear that from a former president? Well, it's disheartening if he was in the room or anywhere and I'm responsible for him. I was prepared to do the same thing for him and his family. Would you have his back today if you were so assigned? I sure would, cuz it's my job. All right, now I wanna remind you 
that the individuals who are coming against him, threatening him, they are saying that they are still pro police. Now they are anti capital police because the capital police officers do not fit their ideological narrative, quite hypocritical. But it's clear, it is extremely clear that the officer was justified, a full investigation has been done and the cop has been cleared. Let me read something that's related but unrelated. A group of seven Capitol Police officers filed a lawsuit on Thursday accusing former President Donald J. Trump and nearly 20 members of far right extremist groups and political organizations of a plot to disrupt the peaceful transition of power during the Capitol riot on January 6th. The suit, which implicated members of the Proud Boys, the Oath Keepers militia, and Trump associates Roger J. Stone Jr. was arguably the most expensive civil effort to date, seeking to hold Trump and his allies legally accountable for storming the Capitol. Wow, all right, he's come out, it's public, he's done the interview. I'm sure more is gonna come out. Um, Dina Dahl, what are your thoughts here legally? You know, well, first, I just want to say what a hero he was and what a sense of duty and honor that he would say he would still defend Donald Trump. And it's those types of public servants that. Uh, you know, we just have to be so grateful for. And in terms of legally, you know, the um, the Capitol Police who are suing him, there's actually quite a few lawsuits going on. You know, members of Congress are also suing him under these same things, and they're going to have subpoena power. They're going to be able to maybe get some of the details that we weren't able to see mm -hmm. in the impeachment hearing. And it, the one defense though that Donald Trump has already asserted is his presidential immunity, saying that what he did that day was part of his official conduct. The Supreme Court has said that any official conduct by a president is immune and not subject to civil liability unless it's criminal. So that issue may go all the way to the Supreme Court under the current Supreme Court and may not go the way to the Capitol Police officers. So we we will see. I've actually I've written an article on this describing all of the different types of presidential immunity. I'll put it up on my Twitter in case your audience wants to see it because it sounds complicated, but it's actually quite simple. But that's gonna be the issue that's gonna determine these cases. Can we just call it like it is? I know we like to say things like nobody is above the law. Well, that's a damn lie. Literally in writing and policy and also based on DOJ memorandum, the President of the United States in many ways is above the law, right? True, and in some ways we want them to be. Like, let's say that there's a bill that's passed, right? Mm -hmm. Saying, um, you know, a food bill restricting maybe the amount of food that subsidies that are beginning to be given, and as a result of that, somebody in the country doesn't have enough food and, and has some sort of malnourishment. We don't want the president to get sued as a result of that, right? That is part of their official conduct. But the problem is, is when he wants, you know, the president wants to broaden this. This is not only coming up in this case, it's also coming up in the defamation case with Gene right. Carroll, who the, and the Biden administration seems to be kind of supporting it because this kind of crosses party lines, right? Every party becomes president at one point, and once they are in that office, they want the umbrella to protect them as much as possible. So, you know, but that day, January 6th, we all see what happened. We do not ever want a president to be able to incite and encourage and participate in an insurrection like this. So how that presidential immunity is decided is going to have a very big ramifications. Very well said and obviously it will have precedent beyond this very moment. Um, let me shift gears. Normally ladies and gentlemen, somebody stripping and taking off their clothes at an official meeting, I would say, you know, that's a no, no. Um, however, I may have to give this guy an exception. Uh, there's a father who stripped down to his underwear at a school board meeting to expose how silly anti-maskers are being. This is at the dripping, <laughs> dripping springs independent school. I'm not making this up. That's the name of the school system, all right? Let's just go to the video. Uh, I'm here to say that I do not like government or any other entity, just ask my wife, telling me what to do. But 
Sometimes I got to push the envelope a little bit, and I just decided that I'm going to not just talk about it, but I'm going to walk the walk. Uh, at work, they make me wear this jacket. I hate it. They make me wear this shirt and tie. I hate it. On the way over here, I ran three stop signs and four red lights. I almost killed somebody out there. But by God, it's my roads too. So I have every right to drive as fast as I want to, make the turns that I want to. I got over here to the school today and the parking lot's full and I decided I was gonna park wherever the hell I want to. Which in this case happened to be a uh, handicap. But I really hate my clothes. So, It's simple protocol, people. We follow certain rules. We, we follow certain rules for a very good reason. Can I, can you stop? Mr. Akers, I, I understand, I believe you're a swimmer, but if you would mind putting your pants back on for a comment, that would be appreciated. Well, listen, okay, his time is already up. So, so you know, he's finished, all right? Oh, you know, I like this guy. Personally, I know the point was extreme, but I like it. He was making a point that when we don't follow rules, because obviously we have freedom and we should not have to follow rules of social order, not follow rules of safety. Let's just abandon all of it. And here's the reality, his argument has intellectual integrity. If you're saying that it's your constitutional right to not wear a mask, and it's a constitutional violation if anyone says to wear a mask, well, it must be a constitutional violation for somebody to tell you to wear a seatbelt or to wear a tie to work or to have shoes when you go into a convenience store. All of that must also be a constitutional violation if the mask mandate is a constitutional violation as well. Let's put up a picture of this guy. His name is James Akers. James Akers is the father of a high school student. I'm sure that high school student is probably not happy about this, but oh well. Uh, the father of a high school student in the Dripping Springs Independent School District, west of the state capital of Austin, uh, used his 90 seconds to speak at the 23rd August meeting to urge the district to institute mask protocols in schools, despite the inconvenient nature of wearing mask, great freaking point, all right? Dina, what, what were your thoughts when you saw this? He did a great visual demonstration <laughs> and I think that is what people are gonna remember, which is good. Here's the deal, this is how you break this down. We have constitutional rights and we have privileges in this country. Privileges can be taken away, can have restrictions on them, such as driving a car. That's a privilege, not a right. That's why there's a ton of restrictions on it. Same with entering a private business, it's a privilege, not a right. That's how we decide whether or not things can be restricted in this country. And there's actually very few maybe constitutional rights you know, most of the things people are thinking about and talking about are privileges. And we allow the government, we allow private companies to restrict those. So his case was perfect. I usually use that as an example. Dress codes, we have them all the time. And the reason why is because going into those places is a privilege, not a right. I like the fact that he had a buildup to taking off his clothes, right? And the buildup was, let me tell you about what I did before I got here. I decided to run stop signs and I also ran red lights. I, I almost killed somebody, but who cares? You know, the road belongs to me too, right? And, and really when you look at it from that context, from the angle that he presented it, that is how ridiculous the argument of mask mandates are when people say, "Oh, I'm anti-masker because it's a violation of my constitutional right. No, we, we have common sense rules and regulations about all of our social order here in the United States. Why do you think they conflate their privilege to do something or to be in a particular place with their constitutional right? 
You know, I actually think it's ignorance. Mm. And why do we not have maybe more basic um, civic rights lessons in this country? Mm. You know, in terms of even just voting, we saw what a mess it was when people didn't understand the basics of how voting works in our country. And also just plain civics, you know, we only have these, uh, you know, bill of rights and people maybe haven't read them, they don't understand them. So I think this is an example of, hey, it's great to live in a country that has rights, but if you don't understand them, this is a big mess and this is an example of that. Yeah, well said, all right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay. You know what the progressive movement needs? It needs a little energy, a little pizzazz, maybe a little caffeine. Oh, coffee, but what if it was too strong coffee? Yes, new, twostrongcoffee.com slash TYT. Look, this helps progressive causes. It's also organic and fair trade, so you've got peace of mind that it was done right. And it happens to taste great. So check it out right now at twostrongcoffee.com slash TYT. Uh, that 300 million is a pretty good number, pretty good number. Well, that's the size of the US population. You know what our next target is? The size of the entire world. We just crossed 5 billion views on YouTube. I mean, imagine 10 years ago thinking one day. We <laughs> looked at you like, are you nuts? Young Turks has just passed uh, another milestone 15 billion views. Damn. All right, lots of comments. You guys are the best. I'm gonna read a few comments uh, from our members. Mr. M Methuselah says on YouTube, Super Chat, uh, thanks for all the important work you do for TYT for the movement. Do you know who had the first Super Chat when I got back from vacation? You won't be sh surprised to find out. Rob Shively, what do you know? Rob says rejoice for Dragon Daddy has returned. This question sent to us by Izzy Sanchez Jr. Is it me or is Meghan McCain talking as fast as Ben Shapiro? Is that the way the right tries to look smart and intellectual? Well, yes. Michael Nathan writes it on Twitter. Did Anna choose Jenk's outfit today? I'm sure it wasn't Jenk himself. Man bun Jenk in skinny jeans says, so now Anna has pointed out. <laughs> Okay, that's his handle. T. Joyce 1971 saying Donald Trump is good at pulling out of things, NAFTA, the Iran deal, NATO. It's just too bad Fred Trump didn't. <laughs> All right, let me do a little quick plug here. It's not even a plug, I'm bragging, okay? I'm bragging, watch me. We have a channel on YouTube, a whole channel devoted just to the Young Turks. It's badass, right? Wow, man. I can see the void. You guys are rock stars. Unbelievable, Senator Sanders. Welcome to Rebel Headquarters. Man, you guys are amazing. We gave you what you wanted. Okay. Speaking of shirts. I have a surprise. <laughs> you reached a lot of people. You are the Young Turks. And we have spread that progressive message wide and far. Let's keep it going. to engage in transparent conversations with those who do not think like me. We also make sure that you know what's happening not only nationally, but in your local area. Make sure you tune in to Indisputable with Dr. Rashad Ritchie, Monday through Friday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time. Cool news, shopdyt.com now has books. Uh, there's a whole bunch of books there. Uh, you're gonna be shocked to find out that they're largely progressive. <laughs> of course! Ryan Grimm's book, we've got people is there. It's fantastic it's a story from Jesse Jackson to Bernie Sanders to AOC that explains the progressive movement probably better than any book I've ever read. Speaking of awesome books, my dad's got a book out called The Original Young Turk, where he goes from the poorest olive farmer you ever met in your life to living the American dream.
All right, welcome back. We got a lot on the agenda, a whole lot of show left, okay? Let me go to some of these amazing comments. Um, don't forget Friday Power Panel, all right? Get ready for an all new Friday Power Panel on the Young Turks featuring Francesca, Jank, Jordan Yule. That's hour one. Hour two, JR, Jank, Benjamin Carollo. That's hour two. That's fun. All right. Um, tune in tyt.com slash live starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Time. Um, and also, following Indisputable, we got Galaxy Brain, Ben Carollo. He's going to have like a lot of work today, okay? But he's Galaxy Brain guy. He can do it, he can handle it. RS King Black Dragon says, I, as an AD service member, salute you, Dr. Richard, for doing the job as hard as trying to inform hardline conservatives of the indisputable truth. A job I don't even think I have the patience for. <laughs> that means a lot coming from you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Mickey C, the Silver Hair Dragon. Officer Bird needs protection. With Trump calling his cult to violence against him, he is in extreme mortal danger. The cult has no problem with cops shooting unarmed black men in the back. As they're running away, but a riotous, violent mob breaking in, calling for the murder of our legislators and VP does not warrant a shooting. All right. Kelly O'Hara, my poet, the people who defy Ashley Babbitt are stuck in, who deify Ashley Babbitt are stuck in a really bad habit of thinking all the cops are fine unless they defy the thin blue line. She shouldn't have died. It's true and sad, but maybe don't be a terrorist. Oh well, too bad. That's kind of cold, uh, Kelly. I cold blooded right there. I understand what you were doing, Kelly, but I was kind of cold blooded. Steel bars though. YouTube super chat. Um, Matthew Taylor just joined, but have been watching for approximately five years. Stay nerdy, stay safe. Love you guys and your passion and dedication for the things you care about. Well, thank you for that, Matthew. Non-human humanist says, my kids kindergarten, uh, my kids in kindergarten is testing weekly. Parents informed about results, also other safety measurements implemented. No one whining. I live in Switzerland. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> All right. Ryan LeBlanc, uh, welcome to Tier 3. Uh, Jacqueline Chestang, hi, Dr. Richie, and hi back to you. Khaled Juma, Dina Dahl, and you got three hearts, <laughs> Dina, they love you. Paul 33, Dr. Richie has the best tie game around. Thank you, my friend. All right, uh, Tom H, thank you for the work you do, Dr. Rich Richie, it is my pleasure. Uh, Freedom fighter, Michael Byrd must have a death wish. Why would he put his uh, name and face out there by doing an interview? Well, here's the thing, it was already out there, you know? It was already out there, investigation just got concluded. Damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? Okay, um, Forbeszilla says, dude, my man is a local hero. I think talking about the father. Uh, that took his clothes off. <laughs> Twitch, Melissa the Defender. Someone should put together an animation of what they think would have happened if he had not shot her, if they had just let them through, and who was there in that hallway. Yeah, good point. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, a man has been sentenced to six years for plotting to kidnap the governor of Michigan. You remember this, these white supremacists. These far right extremists, they got together, they had a full plot to kidnap the governor of Michigan and put her on trial, okay? A man, his name is Ty Garbin, upset over state ordered coronavirus restrictions, was sentenced to just over six years in prison Wednesday for planning to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. A significant break that reflected this quick decision to cooperate and help agents build cases against others. Let's put up a picture of the governor, okay? That's your governor. She's the person that the state of Michigan elected. She was within her constitutional authority for every mandate she sent out. But these individuals, let's put up their pictures. 
They didn't like it. Now, they will tell you they're pro American and pro democracy and pro patriot, but they are anti this governor and anti rule of law. Um, they had a full plot. Let's put up a picture of the cooperating witness who was down with this crew. Okay, there he is, Ty Garbin. What did Donald Trump say about this when it happened? Do you remember? What was Trump's leadership here when literally the federal government had to stop a group of his supporters? Let me be very clear, they supported him 100%. They listened to him and they were radicalized by him. They were doing the bidding of Trump, okay? What did Trump say when all of this went down? He said, and I quote, and we'll have to see if it's a problem, right? People are entitled to say, maybe it was a problem, maybe it wasn't. That's what he said. According to AP News, Ty Garvin admitted his role in the alleged scheme weeks after his arrest last fall. He is among six men charged in federal court, but the only one to plead guilty so far. It was a key victory for prosecutors as they try to prove an astonishing plot against the rest. Garvin apologized to the governor who was not in court and he apologized to our family. This individual said and I quote, I cannot even begin to imagine the amount of stress and fear her family felt because of my actions and for that I am truly sorry. In the plea agreement, Garbin said the six men trained at his property near Luther, Michigan, constructing a shoot house to resemble Whitmer's vacation home and assaulting it with firearms. That is extreme strategy and preparation, okay? He only got six years. Credit for time served, he'll be out soon. The government noting Garbin's exceptional cooperation. Now remember, they had plenty of evidence, okay? Asked US District Attorney, a US District Judge, excuse me, Robert Junker to give him credit for helping investigators reinforce their case against his co defendants. The judge said, the Constitution is designed to ensure that we work out our fundamental, work out our fundamental and different views peacefully, not at the point of a gun, not with some other blunt force threat or a kidnapping conspiracy. Prosecutors recommended nine years, nine. But the judge said basically six years because the judge, now get this, was convinced that Garbin was an excellent prospect to stay out of trouble when released from prison. Not because of the cooperation, not because of anything else other than the judge has somehow figured out, oh, this, this poor young guy. I mean, he's not going to get in any more trouble. I mean, this was just a bad phase in his life. Dina Dahl, we see this routinely. White supremacists who are in fact domestic terrorists being treated like they just had a bad day. Yes, and also the fact that we're starting to see these militias take on bigger and bigger plots, right? I mean, we've had militia activity in our country for a long time, but to have some them actually try to kidnap the governor, and like you said, have not just had a thought about it, but the level of detail they went into the plan is kind of shocking. And then, you know, obviously the invasion of the Capitol, and it's all because you know Trump emboldened them and brought that into the mainstream, and. It it is true that you know six years is not very long, but we do often see in criminal cases this happen. The first person who talks often gets what seems like a very unfair sentence. He is going to be testifying to the other five. Those other five, you know, they're going to probably, if unless they plead guilty, which so far they haven't, they're going to be tried by a jury, right, of their peers and. 
who knows if the, some of their jury will be sympathetic to them. So the prosecutors are going to have him testify as well. And I imagine between the, his testimony and the evidence they've collected, their case is going to be really strong. And they should hopefully get what will be a much more fair sentence because uh, if it is only just this one person convicted for six years, that's like a you know horrible. But we're hoping the other five will have something more meaningful. Yeah, and and let me say this because I I definitely understand how the pieces are used against each other, right? But they had them under surveillance. They have text messages. They have other forms of communication. I even think a confidential informant was heavily involved here. They have the evidence, right? I know this makes it easier to prosecute. I get that. I understand that. But damn, let's just let's go the long route on this one. Let's go the long route on this one and damn his cooperation. And we're gonna prosecute all of them to the fullest extent of the law. What happened to that kind of prosecutorial conduct? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sure. Okay. So Pennsylvania woman, okay, decided to go into a store and spit and cough on the products there, you know, because she wanted to. Well, she has now been sentenced to one to two years in jail, eight years of probation. This woman is from Luzerne County, Pennsylvania. She intentionally coughed and spat on food at Garrity's supermarket in Hanover Township at the start of the pandemic in 2020. Well, she has now re- received her fate. The woman is Margaret Ann Cherko, 37 years of age. Let's put up a picture. She is also ordered to pay nearly $30,000 in restitution and undergo, undergo mental health and drug and alcohol evalu, evalu, uh, excuse me, evaluations. Uh, let me show the supermarket. Okay, now let me bring something to your attention. Come back to me, let me bring something to your attention. Uh, What this woman did, obviously not good, right? She went into a store, she coughed on the products. She decided to put her saliva on their products. And she has now received up to two years in prison, eight years probation, a $30,000 restitution fine, okay? And she has to go through alcohol and drug analysis. Literally, this woman, and by the way, she did not have COVID. Now, what she did was still wrong and criminal. But this woman literally has a tougher sentence than the terrorist that stormed the Capitol. They're getting fines of $500, zero jail time. She got jail time, some real jail time here, $30,000 restitution fine. And she has to undergo eight years, eight years. Of probation. Um, Joe Fasula, who's the co-owner of the supermarket, said the store was forced to throw away about thirty-five thousand dollars worth of food and merchandise. According to arrest papers, Cherko entered Garrity's on the Sands Suki Suchi Parkway that afternoon, March twenty-fifth, twenty twenty, at a time when COVID nineteen was rapidly spreading through Pennsylvania, and uh, little was known about the virus. All right, so she went in, she scared the hell out of a whole lot of people. Um, Nobody knew how the virus um, spread on surfaces conclusively at that time. Um, And and listen, she should have been arrested. What she did, in my opinion, was criminal. But look at the comparison here. She has a harsher penalty than virtually every single terrorist that stormed the US Capitol. Dana Dahl, am I seeing this wrong here? No, and I kind of looked into it because I also thought the same thing. And the second degree felony charge that they charged her with was use of a weapons of mass destruction. This the biological agent, which is where did that come from, Dina? I saw that I saw that in the report, and I said, wait a minute, they got her to plead guilty to using a weapon of mass destruction, where in the narrative of the prosecution, the weapon of mass destruction was a biological agent known as her saliva. I mean, listen, I'm not against the prosecutor being creative. But damn, why don't we have those kind of creative prosecutors prosecuting the terrorist 
who attacked the US Capitol. Why don't we have that for white supremacists? And you have to ask, is it political, right? Are mm-hmm. people not maybe being as creative in DC because they are worried about um, losing the case too, because maybe they've kind of done too many holes and what's that's gonna mean and all that kind of stuff. But you know, it also maybe is revealing to show we need to beef up the domestic terrorist laws because we, if we're not able to fully prosecute somebody who's literally breaching our capital, that is wrong legally. And whether yeah. or not it's the prosecutor's judgment or because the laws aren't strong enough. That's right. And listen, these guys are getting such light sentences that people who were there that didn't get caught, they're telling on themselves on social media. They're bragging about it in their personal network. They're talking about it on dating apps. But I guarantee you, if they were getting the sentence like she got a sentence, they would not be talking about it so openly, all right? We got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay. I'll predict right here for you, Chris. I think Donald Trump will leave office before his term is up. He'll be humiliated, embarrassed, and I know him. He's not gonna wanna That's, lose, and he's gonna run you for the You got hills. that bet all day long. Okay, let's get after it. Now, um, so look, Jake has made some good <laughs> predictions, and you know, this is most, this is in good fun. I could not disagree more. There's um, no bromance between the two of them. You got that bet all day <laughs> long, Janky, you. <laughs> oh, you know, you stop. In the meantime, let's call him out on the day. No, no, but I. I just got a Roku set, uh, did basically a little bit of channel surfing, and I was like, there we are. Yeah. There we are. And then I turned it on, and it was John and Brett on Damage Report making fun of me. Oh, no. <laughs> So you are so busted. I even took a picture of it, okay? And they're talking about my predictions. I got a new prediction for you, John Idola. You're doing a show that's blowing the doors off everybody. Young Turks is the largest online news network, not a big deal. We're gonna rock the boat. We're gonna be counter establishment. We're gonna tell people the truth to the best of our abilities. We're so sick of this corruption. We're not the robots on TV. I actually care about the news. Guilty, guilty, I care. Fourth day on Occupy Wall Street. Last night we launched Wolfpack. It's us pushing our ideas out there, trying to help the country in every way that we can, trying to make this place just a little bit better. Reporting from the Hillary Bernie debate, I gotta be honest, you know what we do, we cover for real. For us, this system isn't working. Free, free, free. and fair, and fair. Elections. elections. And he said, if you're gonna chain her, you're gonna chain me. If you're gonna arrest her, you're gonna arrest me.
Hi, I'm Bartholomew Joseph Kyle. I do audio for the main show, The Young Turks. I also do audio for Post Game. I started in 2006. I met Cenk Uger at the Iraq for Sale screening that was directed by uh, Robert Greenwald. And watching that, I want to figure out a way to be part of something that's genuine and authentic. Welcome back to Indisputable. We got a lot of show left. Let me get to these comments and thank you for commenting. RS King Black Dragon says, to all right wingers out there, freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom from consequence. Exactly. Make see the silver hair dragon. Only six years for plotting to kidnap the governor. There are people who have been in prison for far longer, mostly young black men for smoking a joint. Yet another in a long list of case of white supremacists getting slaps on the wrist for their hate and violence. That's right. Super chat, um, Mini 20202. Uh, have a great weekend, Doc. Thank you for everything you do, and thank you as well. Couldn't do it without you. Mike V, black man gets seven years for possession of marijuana. White man attempt to kidnap city governor, six years. But CRT should not be taught in school though, right? King T, shout out to Dina Dahl. All right, um, Doomver the Northern Aggressor. If you only love democracy when it agrees with you, then you don't really love democracy. That's right. That's a very true statement. There is no finality in democracy and there is no complete agreement in democracy. Never. All right, um, Twitch. Mm. Corum deal girl, I try that next time again. Sorry if I slaughtered it. They trained on his property, sounds like he came up with the plan. I know that's what I was saying when I read that. I'm like, wait a minute, it sounds like you're the mastermind. So how are you getting a deal here? And, and listen, if he is the mastermind, he probably said, listen, fellas, nobody break, okay? Nobody snitches. And then he gets all of the reward for snitching. Anyway, I don't know. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're going to feel free. Back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. For the federal law. private business. No. Which sets its own rules in the state. It store. doesn't work like that. Jim, oh, don't, yes, don't engage does. with him. Don't even talk All right, to I'm him. Gonna, don't even talk to what him. What happened when people were black and they were being discriminated against? You're not going to change your mind, so. Just because people were black and somebody was going to a private business, that gives them the right to discriminate. That's great. That's exactly that's what you're saying. That, no, that's the same. So this is medical discrimination. This is against a disability. We are protected by federal law. Go look up the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's exactly the same. You can't deny that. Because I have a right to do whatever I want with my own body, protect myself, oh my, God. my own health, in the way that I choose to. Do it to. outside. Well, take it out in somebody else, not me. This is the closest place to my house with sewing. There is another one, classes. though. There's another one. It's uh, which way? That way. I live street. that way. This is more convenient yeah. for me. I'm not going to let this keep happening. This is ridiculous. Okay. Well. How much are your classes? Too much for you. This. What are you talking about? Did you get that on video? That's funny. I haven't said anything directly to insult you. I'm coming here to be your customer. I want to invite my friends too. No way. Not if you're discriminating them. Well, would you go away and just shut up? No. I'm not going to let you get away with this. Well, you're the one mouthing. You're the one refusing me any kind of service. <laughs> okay, listen, it, it actually, it gets deeper. There's more, there's more video here. All right, Th this took about an hour, by the way. Should have been a five, 10 minute interaction, it took about an hour. He's an anti-masker, the store has a mask policy. The owners are actually senior citizens. The mask policy can protect them as well. 
and their customers. But this guy is anti-mask, um, a series of viral TikTok video shows this male Karen harassing these store owners over their mask policies in a sewing arts and craft store. The TikToker recorded and posted the videos of an exchange that really lasted longer than it should have, right? Um, at one point, this male Karen literally stole something. Now, he places one of their sewing tools in his pocket. They, one of them, they have to take it out of his pocket. He literally committed theft. He, he stole it, he put it in his pocket, right? But he was being so egregious about everything else, they just kind of let that slide, right? Um, the police eventually did come. Here's the second video. It's just recording? It. Yes, because Are you gonna we, send it to her? No, we're gonna give it to the police when they come here, so. It's not like they can arrest me. No, I know. So we can keep coming back here. Yeah, that's fine. They don't care. They say, oh, I'm sorry, sir, you can't breathe the mask on. That's fine. They're not doing this. That's why I have to go after the few places that are still with these kinds of policies that are affecting everybody's rights. Oh, so you're just going after, not because you want to shop here. You're changing your words now. Don't change your no, words. Not. I also wanted to shop. No, you didn't. Uh, how many times did I ask how much was the sewing class? Did you hear that? This is not the only shop that you can shop at. You have a car. I thought you were walking. You have keep, a car. I'm not going to keep doing go. that. That's what I've been doing for the last year and a half. Okay, now I want to bring your attention to <clears throat> the nicest cops on the planet Earth. Here it is. I can barely hear you. Can you step out here? Yes, step out here. And obviously, your stance is you do not. Uh, you can they do not have a right. That's yes, discrimination. No, no it's not. Right that is discrimination. No, it's not. What, are you a lawyer? No, I'm not. My there's friend a, is a lawyer. They're okay. supposed to right there. Do you want me to call my friend? Have nope. I don't want to talk to him. Maybe you do. Nope. Maybe you. They do. also have a right for free service to anyone, sir. Officer, what, why are you doing this, officer? Because I want to do shopping, and you don't understand that I have a disability it doesn't allow me. Okay. Well, but they're not going to serve they're you. They're not going to serve you. So. so at this point, you got to leave. They will if I sue them. We're here because you're trespassing I'm in the store. I'm sure now. if they were discriminating if you choose because not I was to black, leave. it would be the, it would not be the same. Have a good day, sir. Please don't shop here again. Yep. Yeah, according to our uh, our information, he was never arrested. Um, the uh, when when responding to a woman that said they're taking they're talking way too long, the TikToker responded, "Yep, but they wanted him to come out. But of course he's smart. He stayed inside to avoid an arrest. Uh, they were they were close to arresting him, but he ended up complying." Okay, uh, Dina Doll, this is really really interesting here. Thoughts? Again, if he he does have a right not to wear a mask. In his own home, but you do not <laughs> have a right to not wear a mask in a private place. You have a privilege of entering into private property, which can be revoked or conditioned, and they conditioned it on wearing a mask. It's yeah. really as simple as that. Very simple. Um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, double dose. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a in Sunday? Guy gets mad at me for doing wheelies. Dude, dude, that's so dangerous. It's, it's that not if illegal. you even touch me, do you know what's happening? Touch you? I'm not even touching you. I don't want this in my neighborhood. I'm calling the cops. Okay, call them. Good. Because because it's kids like you that are gonna hurt somebody. Oh, okay. Why don't you go somewhere in Stanford and do that? Do it. Don't do it downtown anymore. The cops don't care. They're gonna. So why care. do you care? Because you're gonna hurt somebody. And if my friends are here and you do it and you run Your into friends? them, they're gonna knock the f out of kids like you. Okay. I suggest you get the f out of this you neighborhood. Know, I, I'm gonna call the cops because I'm tired of you being here and you've run into I'm me before. Run into you? Not yeah, even. Yeah, oh you my have. god. Good, I'm calling the cops. <laughs> Go call them. Watch what they're gonna say. And, and I can tell you, dude, you're looking for an ass whooping from some people. Dude. This is this is uh, <laughs> Ramon at University. This kid who's run into me more than once. I, I haven't run into you. I'd like you to send policemen down. This kid 
is doing something that's highly illegal. It's not and illegal. I want to. I want. He's riding his bike without a front tire, <laughs> and he's running into elderly people running, in oh the middle God. of University Avenue. And I want to file. My name is Iken. I, I want him right. I can, and I want that. No, stay here because the Bro, cops are going to oh write you up. Okay, that's your male Karen. Here comes anti Karen. I know, dude, don't leave the scene of a crime. It's because not I'll a crime. have to tackle you. Is Send there the you? cop down to University of Ramona. There's going to be an incident. Okay, take off. I, I really can't. Take off. Okay. Can you walk? I'm trying to walk. Can My producers are the best. They came up with the superhero music themselves. That was our touch to it. Um, so this male Karen, obviously really upset that somebody has the audacity to have the skill set to ride a bicycle and pop a wheelie. He calls 911, or at least that's what he says. He then tells them, "Oh, the guy's running into me." He's like, "I haven't run into you." No, no, he's running into elderly people. No, that didn't happen either. And then here comes anti-Karens, I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, this may be the start of a new trend. We have seen anti-Karens before. Now, they are rare in these videos, but we now, as a focus on indisputable, we have a new agenda. We are looking for more anti-Karens in the world. Are you an anti-Karen? There you have it, look at that hero. A regular damn Avenger. Dina Dahl, what are your thoughts? I love the anti Karen, especially <laughs> because you know she's a female and here's this kind of aggressive male. I think yeah. it took a lot of courage and um, moral clarity on her part. So good for her, and I do hope we see that more. And you know, I think that we need to start prosecuting false police reporting more because he lied so many times in that police call. And we've talked before, you know, once the police come. Things can happen, and why not instead stop the phone calls before you know that bring them to mm -hmm. incidents? So I think we should be actually prosecuting these types of phone calls more than we do. I agree with you 100%. And as I say often, when you call the police, you're calling a gun. That's what you're calling to the situation. So you're telling me this male Karen is saying in order to remedy whatever this made up conflict is that he has really created. He needs a gun to the situation, okay? Then he proceeds, yes, to lie. Now, why is he lying? Because he knows that this kid committed no criminal act. So if he tells the truth to 911, he also knows that he will look ridiculous, which means his motive was manip was manipulative from the beginning. He knew no crime took place. He knew what the kid did was not criminal. And he had enough sense to understand that if he's going to call 911, he has to make it seem like a criminal act had taken place. This Karen got plenty of sense. This male Karen got plenty of sense, right? He knows exactly what he's doing, why he's doing it, how to do it, and he's utilizing his privilege to do so, and he's telling them, I need a car here. I need a car here right away. Um, what should the penalty be or what is the penalty for filing a false police report? Because when you tell the 911 operator something that's a lie, that's a report that goes into an official record. Yeah, absolutely. And it's prosecuted so um, rarely that it's unclear. Most likely, I would say a misdemeanor. Yeah. And you know, he actually even threatens him with bodily harm, which could also be something on top of that. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, he, okay, fine. He doesn't like him, but instead, he ends up committing, you know, I think a crime in order to, like you said, kind of justify his privilege and have power basically over this boy. Let me highlight another crime that I think I saw here. When the young man was trying to leave, right? Um, especially after the anti Karen came and said, listen, are you okay? And started like blocking to make sure this guy could leave because he was trying to leave. Is that a criminal charge? You're, you're literally being held against your will, even if momentarily. 
That could be. I mean, he is on a bike. It's a little bit unclear. There is this front wheel missing. I don't know how much he's betting being blocked. But yes, if he is not letting him leave, physically cannot go, that, that's absolutely a crime. Okay. Um, Dina Dahl, it's always great to have you break down information and news and the law on Indisputable. Tell people how they can follow you and check out your great work. Well, thank you, Dr. Ritchie, for having me. I always love discussing this with you. They can look at me, find me on Twitter, ask Dina Dahl one. There it is. Thank you so much, Dina. I appreciate you. Have a great weekend. You too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> if you are watching me streaming, if you're on the YouTube channel, that means that we got more show in the bullpen. If you're watching me on linear television, then this is the end of the program. Make sure you join us on the YouTube page, Indisputable TYT, for my bullpen debate. We got more on the other side, stick and stay. Cenk Uger is not here today, which means that I will be able to talk during the show. Now, we'll just, see, we'll <laughs> see. Poor Cenk, under the bus. My God, if Jesus came back, how much would the Republicans hate him? Now you have to give away all of your possessions to the poor. Oh. Steve King would be like, oh, wheezy. Everyone should be lucky enough to have a John Iroa in their life. You confused okay. everyone. Uh, okay, sorry, gonna, I thought it was too clear. To take a break now. You can turn me to Dr. Manhattan as long as I get what Dr. Manhattan's packing, okay? Yeah. The liberal mom says, Mark Thompson, have you ever uh, thought about doing one of those tapes that soothe people to sleep? Like Mark Thompson reads the phone book, I'd buy it. If you'll buy it, I'll do it. Emilio uh, D'Amelio writes in, John, you are so thick. I love you. <laughs> That's what I, that's what he wrote. Pork Chop Express writes in and says John Iderola needs a new jacket. Whoa! Those twenty-four inch pythons. Oh, are about to burst out of his gun, babies. You know the two people here said that their moms are both in love with you over Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. That's an improvement. I usually get grandmothers. Charlie Turk. Charlie Turk. <laughs> no, wait a minute! Don't you dare. Chemical castration when we return from the break. I hope that you know who they choose for the White House. Isn't just a borderline Klansman. That's all we gotta hope. That, <laughs> that's, that, that's it. We will settle. Uh, She's cute. I didn't say that about Lori. Oh <gasps> Scandal at TYT. Did Anna comment on my tan yet? No, no, she hasn't. <laughs> You're a good foster. Ah. But Anna did say that I come in here today with a fresh mind. That's all I'm about. I'm about a fresh mind. I can't with you <laughs> right now. Okay? She, she just can't. She can't, but nonetheless, we have to for another three hours. I'm back, baby. Let's rip in the Republicans. You don't miss the live show. <laughs> That's great. Tell people if you remember, you get the whole live show whenever you want. Because th this stuff doesn't go into any of the clips. Welcome to the Damage Report, I'm John Iderola. This is gonna be a big one. Meanwhile in the Arctic, you know where this is going. <laughs> you watch the Damage Report, the Arctic's on fire. Obviously, why would we be talking about the Arctic except to tell you that it's melting once again? The Republicans aren't that interested in it, I wonder why. Mm -hmm. Lift out of poverty up to 3.7 million people, including an estimated 1.3 million children. Hashtag save the children, eh, not if it costs money, I mean, Absolutely. come on. What's happening, I'm Dr. Rashad Ritchie, host of Indisputable with Dr. Rashad Ritchie. Here's the bottom line, I play no games about policy, period. Too many people's lives are at stake. So here's what I do, I challenge conservative ideology that hinders the growth of this country. I make sure we place our facts in proper context and I have no problem debating anyone on a position that I have. Progressives have the ideas to change the world. But when you really look at it, progressives have always change this world for the better. I want you to tune into my new show, Indisputable with Dr. Rashad Ritchie, right here on the TYT Network, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time. I'll see you there.
Everything that we've accomplished over the years is because of our members who've allowed us to remain independent of corporate interests and reach 20 million followers. Now is the time to bring as many people into the progressive movement as possible. We're inviting you to be the change and help bring a community powered progressive change machine to life. Details are at tyt.com slash change. If you're a member, thank you, we need you to remain so. If you're one of the thousands of viewers out there who's not a member yet, the time has come for you to join now. We need you more than ever, tyt.com slash change. All right, welcome back. We got a lot of comments, let's get to it. TYT member Mickey C the Silver Hair Dragon says, laughing my A off, love that Silver Hair Dragon standing up to him. Yeah, way to go. RS King Black Dragon, anti karens unite, cute superhero thing. <laughs> RS King Black Dragon also says, I wish I had Dr. Rich as a teacher in school. He is so engaging, thank you so much. I appreciate you saying that. And um, maybe one day you will be in my classroom as a college student. Listen, we got online courses everywhere. All right, Super Chat, King T. Shout out to you, Doc, on your awesome show. 179,000 subscribers and growing. Thank you for that, and that's because of people like you, all right? Bernie the Kiwi Dragon, the guy busting a gut over someone popping a wheelie. Why do people have so much spare time on their heads? I mean, really, right? The progressive carpenter <laughs> says, it's incredible how these Karens call the cops and talk to them like they're the damn dispatcher. That is true. Like he was calling the police saying, I need a car here now. <laughs> um, 
Stone Flower Dragon, Anti Karen, at last, the noble purpose. Omega Shinron, Shinron Dragon, um, sign in F voice, sing in FF voice, there goes my hero. Okay, Mel D, Mel Karen, Darren. I know, we just, because everybody has a different name for Mel Karens, right? Ken's, Darren, like, we just call them Mel Karens here. All right. Uh, Virginia Slim says, damn, is that old boy from Harry Potter? <laughs> All right, Hazy Dragon, my friend's a lawyer. What's up with these Karens and their friends? I know. Uh, Chill Will says, thanks for keeping us enlightened, inspired, and in touch. Thank you so much for that. Twitch, Mundo 4994, black people, we want equal rights until police stop killing us, white people. Put a mask. <laughs> that's right. All right, that's funny. Um, Karamdeal Girl, that music though, TYT, love the hearts. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, we got Charles Love, Executive Director, Seeking Educational Excellence, and host of the Charles Love Show. Charles, good day. Welcome to Indisputable. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing quite well. I don't want to presume what you know or believe about critical race theory and patriotic education. So if you would, give us some of your background, your perspective as it relates to CRT and K through 12 education. Wow. Um, <laughs> this has been a, a crazy few months debate in this, and I, and I think I've been listening to a lot of the, the the conversations, and I don't know where to go from CRT in K through twelve, as you mentioned it, because I don't think it's being taught under the guise of that title. So correct. Um, yeah. So I don't know if that is the issue, so to speak. I, I hear that being the debate. I don't like getting into the debate as to what is CRT and do, does this person really know what CRT is? Well, uh, let me say something to that because I think you make a great point. Mm -hmm. Because the anti-critical race theory bills that have been posited by Republican lawmakers and governors, mm -hmm. they impact only K through 12 education. So when they have a press conference and they hold rallies, <laughs> And at the signing ceremony, they say things like, this is anti-CRT. Well, critical race theory is not even inside of the legislation that they're signing. So mm -hmm. you have basically said the same thing that many of us have been saying. Right. They're not passing legislation against critical race theory. Because critical race theory has never been taught in K through 12 education. So why have they made CRT the villain in this entire political and legislative narrative? Well, see, I don't know if we can really say that CRT hasn't been taught directly. And I'm not saying, and, and I agree with what you said. That is the problem is some people define it in its original sense. Others say that it's not what it originally was, you know, as legal study, but somebody took that idea and said, let me build on it. And then they wanted to do something else with it, and so whether you call it that or not is kind of separate. Um, I don't, I don't know uh, from a legislation standpoint. I mean, I guess I know why they're doing it. Uh, there are definitely concerns with the way education is, is is being shifted and kind of made political. It's like we're making, you know, bringing our political debates into the classroom with young kids, which I do have a problem with. But I don't know. How effective the legislation will be, and I've argued that they may not be as effective as they want them to be, because, like you said, are they teaching that? So what I notice is, for instance, so all the bills are a little different. But if you say, well, you can't teach racial essentialism, okay? But what that teacher is doing that you may have a problem with, and they may be right that it's concerning, but it may not be what I mean. Who defines? I guess let's go there. Who defines mm -hmm. what racial, what uh, race essentialism is? Is it because I would define it as saying one race is better than another, and I would agree you shouldn't teach that in school. Well, but but that's not taught. That's not even well, right. But is that in, in critical race theory? But let me tell you, uh, let me push back on a couple of items, and to some degree, it's semantics. Okay. Um, I actually do believe that education should talk about politics. I believe that, let me tell you why. The word political actually means to be concerned with the affairs of your country, 
or nation. That's what the word means. Political does not inherently mean partisan. I do not agree with partisan education, but I do agree and I'm okay with political education based on the definition and design of the word political. Let me take you to Texas, for example. Texas passed a bill out of their Senate chamber that said, if you teach things like white supremacy, if you teach things like the KKK, you cannot teach that it was morally wrong. So you cannot give deference in the teaching is the language of the bill, which means if you teach it, you must present it based on a uh, based on a non moral premise. And here's the reality, man. I'm a former high school teacher. I'm a current college professor. There is a moral lesson in academic studies. There's a moral lesson in historical studies. There's a moral lesson in political studies. There's a moral lesson uh, in American studies. So if you take away the morality of the lesson, now you're taking away a large percentage of why education is even necessary in the first place. We're not trying to teach students for the sake of them having head knowledge. We're teaching students for the sake of them to be morally and socially developed individuals to make better decisions about their future and their society around them. So why would you take away the moral application of the lessons we have learned historically in this nation? Well, see, I can't really speak to the parameters they put on the bill, but one of the problems I find with with the moral aspect is the way the culture has shifted, you know, which is what I pay attention to the most, and I th- I'm more concerned with, because in that sense, now from what you said, there's nothing wrong with what you said, except the culture has shifted so much now. We all have very different understandings of what morality is. So I'm not saying that legislators should put this tight rein around it, because you know you never know when you squeeze it where it's going to go. But I will say that. If you're saying that morals should be there, and we don't necessarily agree on what those morals are, we so you might be fine with a teacher saying, "Well, the KKK is bad, and and slavery is bad, and white people doing this is bad," and be totally fine. But then a teacher may come up and say that morally, I believe the total opposite of what you believe. I believe that the not the Nazis were right. Right, and then they should be able to teach that because morally they think it's okay. Because well, no. you have to have a you have to have a basis of whose morals you're following. <laughs> okay, let's do this. History gives us a great analysis of who were the bad guys and who are the good guys. Right? No, uh, do that's you not accept? true. That well, is not well, true. <laughs> well, let me explain. Let me explain where I'm coming from with that. Um, historically speaking, four to six percent of white people in America. Agreed with the philosophy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. That's it. That was an NBC poll that was done for white America. Fast forward a few decades later, now the vast majority of white Americans were for the ideology of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. History had a way of looking back at that era and saying he was right, and the white people that opposed him, well, they were wrong. So we have some clear moral principles here. And if we're saying we cannot clearly identify some level of moral principle, like we have to be able to clearly say the KKK is bad. But we have to be able to clearly say slavery was an evil and unnecessary. We have to be able to clearly articulate these things in our educational systems. Do you not agree? Well, no. The problem is you're 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 conflating what's actually happening in the schools. You you you're you're believing that the people who are coming out against CRT, as they're calling it. Mm-hmm. Or whatever problems they have with the education in K through 12 today, that that problem is a history problem, and that is not what the argument is. So, for instance, um, there was uh, some something today. A lot of it is not it's race or gender focused, but it would be nowadays in the schools you're talking about a kid, let's say nine to 12 years old, can go to school and say they want to change their gender. And they should be able to do this without the parents knowing they're doing this, and the schools sign off on it. And they have forms and ways to process this and all that stuff. So some will find that to be immoral. So we're saying that it's okay for schools to do that today. So when a parent stands up and said, I have a problem with you telling my eight, nine, 10 year old daughter or son that they can do this and do it behind my back. They're gonna say that they're standing on a moral standing and history will say that they're right (laughs) for letting that kid change his gender. Okay, man, listen, brother. You're making a classic mistake in the debate. You're utilizing a microcosm whoa, and whoa, an extreme uh, variation. Are you saying that it's not allow, happening? Uh, allow me to finish, brother. I'll but yeah, are you, you saying it's not thought. happening though? 
brother, allow me to respond to you. I allowed you to get your thought fully out. You're utilizing a microcosm and an extreme variation of the argument in order to explain the the argument itself. So let me give you another side of this. If we're talking about K through 12 education, right? And that has been basically the point of contention, school board meetings, parents fighting. And right now, the big thing um, are the mask. It was CRT, now it has shifted to the mask, right? Well, we've already settled right here on this show. Critical race theory is not being taught in K through 12 education. Let's talk about this fundamentally, right? This was a false pretext by the political class of conservatives in order to trick parents into believing that critical race theory was even being taught. CRT is an advanced theoretical framework. I teach CRT, I've been teaching critical race theory since 2016. I was taught by Dr. Chika Kua, who's a world renowned African scholar. And this isn't something that's even taught typically in undergraduate studies in college. So it's not CRT, I don't care what you say they think it is. It's not that, it's like saying, you're, you're teaching calculus to students just because you're teaching them math. It's not calculus then, <laughs> that's what that means. So you're not teaching critical race theory just because you're telling the truth about the racist history of the United States of America. And I don't see a problem teaching the truth of our history because I don't believe you can change what you fail to acknowledge. If we fail to acknowledge the reality of our country, then how can we ever hope to remedy the problems of our history? Do you okay. agree with me on that? Um, the last piece, yes, but you did the exact same things you claimed I was doing. How? I know, I know, because I never said that. In fact, we started this conversation off agreeing that it wasn't CRT. You are doing, you are making the same mistake. You're getting hung up on a title. You you just want to keep saying no, that. Not, not. I, I, you you said that I needed to let you finish, and now. May I? Thanks. No, brother. I just so, gave so you. now that, you're that saying that. Not, I'm not so, getting hung also, up on I'm the supposed title. to let you finish, but you're not going to let me finish. I just said quickly, I'm not getting hung up on the title, brother. I will respond fully to you when you finish, though. But you're going to let me finish, correct? Thanks. So CRT, <laughs> I said CRT wasn't being taught. And you keep you keep you keep harping on. See what their teachers are CRT. This is some political thing. No, it's parents saying I don't want this race. Focus. It's not history. That is that is a ploy. They are not going to coming to the school board saying, mm -hmm. "I just don't want. I'm white and I don't want to learn about black history. I don't want to hurt, mm -hmm. learn the truth of history. It's not the truth of history. It's either people taking what what is factual in history and switching around things, omitting mm -hmm. things." Right. Okay. So it's, it's that it's telling kids, it's separating kids by race. It's it's okay. telling young it's telling young kids that because you're white, you have a debt to pay to the black student in your mm -hmm. class and things of that nature. Okay. It's, it's, Who it's, taught it's, that? It's, so you 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 thought I was going to come here with a list of every teacher who do, who's done that? No, I mean if you, you make that proclamation so are you against. Done, oh, hold yeah. on, brother. If you make that you, proclamation, are you saying that? Are you sir, saying? Are sir, you if saying you make that, that proclamation, an allegation against school teachers, what school teacher do you know that has taught that white children are evil or bad? I and never that, said evil. So how can we have an honest discord when you change the words I say? Okay, so what are you and then saying? You say I'm supposed to come in here. With, I'm supposed to come in here with an itemized list of well, every brother, school board. So Sandy, so let me Sandy, give you my itemized Sandy, list. San Diego said that yeah, San yeah, Diego said they wanted prepared. to stop using grades. Yes, sir, brother. That, I and attend to come prepared, brother. So what? let me show you what preparation. Yeah, so you looks keep like. talking over me. What, what do you mean come prepared? San All Diego right, said that. San Diego said that it is unfair to grade black and brown students and include attendance and things of that nature as if to imply that black students can't show up to school on time. You know, it's like okay, the, the I'm going to respond to that in a second. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So, uh, when we talk about this CRT element, we have already established and I just want you brother, I just want you to to agree for the record clearly. You do agree that critical race theory is not being taught in K through 12 education, right? By name. Okay. Why is it that 94% of Republicans believe that no, critical no, race I'm theory is taught in K through 12 education? Where did that come no, from? Don't know. Not a Republican. You'd have you to don't know. You don't know? 
You you ask me why do Republicans believe something? Right. Of course I don't know why somebody believes something. I, uh, I know I know that if a I'm parent has a problem, finish, with though. Though. what'd you say? I'm gonna tell you why when you're finished. I know why they believe it. You you don't know. Yes, I do. You're gonna tell me why you think they do. I'm gonna tell you why I know they believe it. Okay, go ahead. I'd okay. love to hear this. Critical race theory has been around since the 50s. It was formalized late 60s, early 70s. It has never been taught in K through 12 education and it did not become a great evil. Hell, one fifth of America didn't even know what it was until Donald Trump said it was a great evil. It became a great evil when Donald Trump signed a federal executive order saying that if there was any diversity inclusion training that included the teaching of critical race theory or CRT, which by the way, some of them did in order to explain the framework of it. He said that they would be defunded. Once Donald Trump said critical race theory was a great evil. All of a sudden school boards across the United States of America, Republican members of Congress, they decided to say the same exact thing. The truth is you've never been taught critical race theory in K through 12 education. I wasn't taught it in K through 12. Your children are not taught in K through 12. And it has been around for decades without any push from the Republican Party until Donald Trump said it was an evil. You think that's a coincidence? So are you telling me that the only reason parents are upset about the negative things that are being taught in their schools is because Donald Trump told them to be? The reason why parents are going to school boards saying stop teaching our children critical race theory when it's not even being I didn't ask, you're not answering my question though cuz I didn't ask I, you oh about I CRT am, I am asking you No, I'm not, but I'm not asking you about CRT. I said parents who see parents the curriculum, tricks. see what the teachers are doing parents are upset tricks. about it. Are yeah. they are they upset yeah, the same about parents, it? Brother, the same parents yeah. that believe so they're upset the same because parents. of Donald Trump. These are the same parents that believe some mythical creature stole the damn election from Donald Trump. Totally the same untrue. parents so so I speak to, to, on, to, they aren't Hold even on. conservatives. What are you talking about? You, the you're, same you're, parents <laughs> that believe what That's happened at the Capitol on January 6th was appropriate. Over 70% of Republicans you're, agree you're with doing what your viewers a disservice on January 6th. by feeding them this the nonsense. Way. You're doing them a disservice by feeding them this nonsense. They're the ones the that I talk to aren't I Republicans. So I don't like, because the people, the, the parents that I hear complaining about what's going on in these schools aren't even conservatives. And you you have your okay, people so buying, that. believing that this is a Donald Trump uh, infused thing and they believe this stuff. They <laughs> see the things the kids brother, coming home. About? Listen, I don't have unlimited time. What are they upset about being taught? What precisely? I, I just told you, they, they, they're upset about being taught that race is essential in and this cultural um, um, pedagogy they need to teach about teaching um, black kids differently from other kids by saying that um, blacks and, and, and whites are different in certain respects, by telling them that the white kids are, should treat the class, the black classmates differently, that um, everything should have a black focus or a, a race focus, not necessarily a black okay, focus. Brother. So. You, you, right. can think, um, you can go on and believe in this is Donald Trump, but um, well, oh yeah, it's Donald not. Trump definitely is a catalyst to it. Let me get to the other part of what you wanted to talk about. You are a promoter of something called patriotic education. That's also not true. Do you lie for your no, your no, host? This, this is a note I didn't that say, I have what, that. Read a quote where I said oh, something about patriotic education. Hold on, brother. If I'm wrong about you supporting patriotic education. I will apologize and say I'm wrong. Okay, do like do you support patriotic education? I've never even heard of it, don't even know what it is. Okay, all right, well obviously I got a wrong production note and I do apologize to you. All right. So what kind of education do you support? But, but honest education, actual okay, education. Okay, so you, you support honest history, right? Right. That this country was founded and rooted in bias and racism, <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh my God, are you funny? So, so no, what, wait, I, what, I mean, what, what, what I mean by honest history is that you can teach the bad and the good. You can teach the bad of America, uh -huh. but people, people like the the people who support CRT, like you want to use that frame or 1619, they don't want to teach anything positive. So they say, let me show you all the bad of America, and they don't I teach don't, anything I'm positive. I'm not concerned about them for this debate. So I say you, you ask you what I want to talk. I want my, good my and bad. So you, you can't only you? teach negatives about America. Okay, you brother, can't but teach my, my America. question still stands, brother. Do you agree that this country was founded no. based on the premise of no. racism and bias? You do not. No. Well, why no. is it that you and I were considered in the Constitution 
three fifths of a man. Why? Why? Oh is my that? God! You're an educator and you believe that, sir? It was in the Constitution. It was the three fifth yeah. compromise. Yeah. Uh, now you tell me. You enlighten us. Why does the Declaration so think, of Independence? Why does the Declaration of Independence call Native American savages? Uh, am I answering the first question, or are we just going to keep throwing stuff at Okay. Well, the three flip, three fifths clause obviously was not to say that you were three fifths of a man. That's not true. It is absolutely not true. And yeah, I go ahead have and to believe. Don't I have, have to believe you know brother. that. I have to believe you know that. Brother, it is I want the slave holding right. states. Exactly but you keep talking. Means, the slave holding states wanted mm-hmm. to count slaves right. to get great, greater uh, representation in Congress, in the but not college to, so that they can have power right. in Congress right. and, and right. in right. national politics. More power, you want not to give those slaves black people. Black men were counted as how black men was counted were counted as three fifths of a person. See that you're not allowing me to speak, right, brother? Are you for how the Constitution was written in order to write out black people? Were you for that or you against that? This is insane. Brother, that's a simple ass question. You for that or against that? Was it right or was it wrong? I'm for people understanding actual history, knowing the truth and not the silliness that you're talking about. The silliness, the the way yeah. the Constitution was written was silly and immoral. You just said you were three fifths of a man. That is Sir, not true. The Constitution said that. Look Maybe at you, brother. Three fifths Look at you, man. Brother. I'm not. Why did the Declaration of Independence call our Native brothers savages? Why did it do that? What else did uh, Thomas Jefferson write brother, about? I'm slavery? asking you a direct question. And I'm brother. asking that's you a direct question. What, question. what else did Thomas, did Thomas uh, brother, Jefferson say? The slavery was good. Part of the question that did I posed. Did he say slavery was good? Brother, the second part of the question I posed to you. Why? Why did the Declaration of Independence call our native brothers savages? <laughs> you tell me why. Have a good day, brother. If you don't know that, if you don't know well, where I that know. came from, but you, you don't just twist to be on my show. If you don't know where that came from, I don't need to deserve to be on your show it. unless you're going to continue to lie, right? What am I lying about? The Declaration of Independence called our native brothers savages. What? Where's the lie? The lack of context. Well, give it then. These were racist <laughs> SOBs who wrote it. That's my context. What's your right. That's your context. What, what did Thomas Jefferson write about slavery? Brother James you, Madison. Listen, man, I don't George take Madison, advice. You don't know. Do you? Well, actually, you know, you just don't want to say. I'm, I'm answering the question, brother. Okay, go ahead. I'll be damned. I don't give a damn what you wrote <laughs> when you supported and owned sure slaves not. and participated in the industry of slavery. Why would I give a damn what letter you penned? You're engaging in the evil that you're saying that others should not. Why were natives called savages in the Declaration of Independence, brother? Why? You were doing a disservice. You can't do it, can you? You can't because say it. Makes it can sense. You? you can't say it. Because I can say that people are flawed? Yeah, I can say that. That's people are flawed. Were they racist? Were they bigoted? Were they oh, of evil? Course, of course, of course they were. A lot of people were, yes. Good. But that's not the whole of them. But that. that's not the whole. Brother, I'm not talking about the whole. I'm talking about those bad apples. No, I'm not just talking about That's the whole of that person. That is not the whole of that person's existence. Huh? Thomas Jefferson. Brother, that's between them and God, brother. The whole of their existence. I don't judge the whole yeah, of anybody. But you're acting existence. as if there's no good. So there's engage, nothing good in the Constitution because of the part on. you didn't like. If if you engage, there's nothing good in the Declaration of Independence because of what you say he said about natives. Brother, if you engage in systemic oppression and racism against my community, hey, no, there's I nothing don't good. give a damn what so there's else nothing you good have in the Constitution. Well, but then you I'm admit not, that I'm there's not nothing your... good in the Constitution. The okay. Constitution is wholly bad because of its authors, right? Oh yeah, part of it. Hell yeah. yeah so course. it's wholly bad. Okay, okay. so we are, uh, there. We go. That's the, the, now we've actually come to, to a consensus. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely, part of it is completely biased. Um, you have biased racism. You have extremism inside the Constitution. It's riddled with mistakes. That's why you have amendments to the Constitution. I do appreciate you being on the show. My producers are telling me to wrap it up. Thank you, brother. All right, ladies and gentlemen, remember, make sure you take care of yourself, take care of each other, and take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable.